Alrighty, computer art. It is the week where we need to put our movie poster together. So um, what I've got in front of me is my more or less finished example for you guys to look at. We'll talk about how I put this together. But first things first, I want to um, let's go back to our landing page in Pixlr. And in fact, maybe let's go even back one more step. So, whoops, too far. Go to pixlr.com. You're going to see this page. You do not have to log in or create an account. You just want to click on Pixlr E to go to the editor that we're using instead of Photoshop. Um, it's going to open up. If you've been in here before, it'll show your history, all of the images that you've been working on. You can see some of the stuff that I've been playing around with. Um, or if you haven't been in there for a while, um, you might just see the create new page. And we definitely want to create a new one. We want to set the width up to 2400 and the height to 3600. This is going to give us the correct aspect ratio that would give us kind of a smaller version, but still the same, the right shape for an actual movie poster. So that's going to be the, the ratios that you want to work with, 2400 by 3600 pixels. I am not going to click uh, create. Um, I would name it up here. So you're going to name your movie here. I've already started mine. So I'm going to skip this part where we're going to create it and go into my history and click on my file that's already going. Give it a second to load and we'll talk about kind of the, the different parts and pieces of this, um, this poster. All right. So first things first, um, there are basic things that have to be on your poster. They're going to be part of the requirements for what you are responsible for. Um, number one, you need to have at least uh, one image, a picture that you have taken um, that is manipulated and is going to show kind of the, the genre, the style of that genre. And because mine is supposed to be comedic, I've got these bright colors. I've got kind of a fun offset effect where I've got um, a couple of different filters that I'll talk to you about that are giving this kind of a fun, almost comic book feel to it. Um, the font on my, um, I've got my title up here. So Miss Headcase is the name of the movie. It's up here at the top, kind of overlapping the image, which kind of ties everything together and helps it flow. Um, as far as the color on this goes, I'm not, this is where I'm kind of still thinking about coming in and working on it because it seems like it gets a little bit lost, but um, it's it's something that is working at the moment. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, so you need a title, whether your title is up at the top or it's below the image, as long as it's in that top three quarters of your movie poster, that's fine. You can see that the image itself occupies about three quarters of the entire page. Um, that is about what you want to be working with. All this, the um, billing information at the bottom of the poster is meant to be smaller. Um, you're still going to have some parts of it that are kind of medium size, but it in no way should compete with this main image. This is what is going to be grabbing the, the client's eye and really selling the movie. So we've got the title of the movie. Then we have this statement right here, usually a question, sometimes a statement that is a teaser. So it's something that kind of gives you a hint about what the movie's about, might get you thinking about what the plot is, and um, invites you in a little bit. So this should be kind of the teaser that gets you interested in learning more about the movie. And then once they've got you there, then you have this statement here that can just be a short sentence. It might not even be an entire sentence, but something that gives a little bit more information about your movie. So You've got title, teaser, and a detail statement that kind of engage the viewer, get them to think about it a little bit more. And then if they're still not convinced, including a couple of reviews on your movie poster would be appropriate as well. So if this has gone out, it's been previewed by um, movie critics, and this is what they've said about it you can make up some movie reviews and splash them on there as well. Again, all of this title, teaser, detail statement, and reviews should be integrated with that main image so that this occupies about the top three quarters of your um, poster. 
And then we have the billing um, information down here, which is very important. It gives acknowledgement to the, the movie studio that is behind the production, the directors, the stars that are in the movie, so on and so forth. There's a lot of text in a bottom billing. Um, I have kind of a, a little bit of a hack here for you that I'll talk about as well, but there'll be a portion of this that you do create from scratch and a part of it that is optional that you can use my hack and just drop it in there. So we'll talk about that as well. So we've kind of covered the basic components that you need in your poster. So let's get into how we do this and how it's created. So let's start kind of where we, uh, we first led off with the title of the movie. I'm going to show you something that I did because if you just go straight into text in Pixlr and um, click that add text button, you know, you get your little text box popping up and then you have this very limited menu of text that you have to work with, right? Um, I found this deeply unsatisfying and really not, um, not great. So I'm going to show you what I did to remedy that. But before I do, I'm going to take this text layer that I just created that I don't need and delete it so that, that is not going to be hanging out on our poster. So um, I went to a website called FontSpace. And because we're working on um, school district owned computers, you're probably not going to be able to download anything from a free font, font space like this. So I um, have found a workaround that we can use to still be able to access this, uh, this free resource, but um, then we don't have to worry about trying to download it onto the computer um, and messing around with that. So let me kind of introduce you to this. First of all, um, Font Space has all these different styles and you can, like if you've got something, a horror genre. So if we just put in the term horror, then any of the fonts that are associated with that genre is going to come up. And because I, in this little field right here, I've already typed in my title of my movie. It says head case right there. Then I can see, it can get a preview of all these awesome um, fonts that I can dive into. Let's try another one just for giggles. see if we have anything that's for a science fiction. That well, looks like we, oh, here we go. So there are a lot of really cool, fun fonts in here that you can play with. So if I find one that I think is kind of cool, you can see it down here at the bottom, we've got several different pages we can click through. All right, so I'm going to click on this guy right here. And it's going to take me to a preview page where I can see my um, my statement in, or my title in just regular or italic. And then this slider right here will bring it down to where I can see the whole word. Now this is where I employed my little snip tool. So since I can't download the fonts, what I have to do is grab this with my snip tool and bring it in so I can grab this, try not to get any of those little buttons beneath it. Try to just get your, your letters Okay, so now this is hanging out on your little clipboard and then we can go into our file and we should just be able to go edit and paste and oh, bam, there it is. So then you can use your, um, your cutout mask to get rid of the white in the background. You can manipulate this as, a, as an image. So that means that you can use any of the filters on it. You've probably noticed when you are using the text tool, the filters are closed to you. 
but when you bring something in from um, a source like this, it reads it as an image. And so then you're able to um, manipulate it as an image, which is kind of cool. Whoops. No, I do not want to add a text layer. Thank you very much. Let's just go back to my marquee tool. Um, so clicking on that image, I can go here to the, the background removal and just click on and it automatically just um, takes all of that white out of there. I can go to edit and transform or do a free transform and be able to resize it, squash and stretch it. So if I wanted to swap out my text, I could do so. And so that's how you go in and get a large variety of text without having to worry about the filters that won't let you um, download anything. And um, since it is a free source, it's not like we're doing anything that would be, you know, shady in any way. You want to avoid doing things like that. But this is a nice um, resource for you so you can get some interesting fonts in there. But again, because I really don't need a second text on this, I'm going to go ahead and choose to delete that layer. Okay. So there we have our... Oh, I do have a second one in there. That's what that is. Pardon me while I clean up my file real quick. Get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So find an interesting font. You can do that as much as you want to. I used it only for my title because this stuff, I had a lot to type in there and it's a little harder. So you can see if I was to hold up, grab this entire phrase, right, control C to copy it and then bring it in here. Get rid of the first one. So it's, it's a lot more difficult to capture multiple lines of text. It only let me bring in the first line. So even if I size it all the way back, you're, you're limited to how much you can get away with with this little hack. So just be aware of that it's, oh, here we go. Maybe I was going too fast. So it, it will let you do it, it looks like. So, but it does get a little harder to read once you get it down too small like this. So just be aware of that, experiment with it, um, but probably just use it for your title. That's the best way to get away with it. All right. So um, let's talk about text itself. So right now I'm in my uh, creative genius or certifiable lunatic text layer. So let's find it in my stack. You can see because I've got it clicked, that layer is highlighted, highlighted and I can manipulate it. But because it is a text layer, I can't really get in there and manipulate it without um, triggering the text. One minute. <coughs> Okay, um, and minute clicking that text tool. So now I'm in here, I can double click to uh, select my text. Oop. No, I won't tell me to drop an open file. There we go. And go into my settings and here's where I can uh, play around with a bunch of different things here. So right now I've got it set to all uppercase. I could change that back down. I think I do like the way it looks as all uppercase. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, I can manipulate my line spacing. So if I wanted to make the lines a little tighter and move that text in so that it really is super closely stacked, I can do that. If I wanted to change the alignment so that it's centered versus um, aligned at the left, then I can do that right here. Um, I can also change the letter spacing. So if I want my letters to space and get a little closer together so that maybe this exists on just two lines instead of three, then I can do that. Um, and that would give me a little bit more room for my image. So I think I will leave that change in there. 
but I'm going to move my text box down a little bit closer to my details statement. There we go. Be really careful when you are stacking text anywhere that you are paying attention to alignment. So, um, and what I mean by that, I'm gonna zoom way in so that we can, oof, maybe not that way in, home down stall. All right, so let's zoom that just a little bit more. So you want to make sure that you can see when I get pulled in tight on this, that my text does not line up. I've got this guy up here. If I click on that to activate that layer. I need to go, I need to move this over a little bit. So I'm just going to use my arrows key, move that over so that I've got a nice alignment with the text underneath it. So that this doesn't look, um, crazy. All right. And then I've got my, my um, text statement underneath, which I think I do want the letter spacing to be a little tighter. And the line spacing to scrunch down a little bit as well so that this again, doesn't take up quite so much visual space. So when we zoom back out, you can see that now we've got a little bit more emphasis on the image itself and um, not so much on the text. So it's there, it's interesting, it's important, but it's not uh, taking the main, main floor, okay? All right, um, Finally, let's get into our billing, this bottom part. So I'm going to zoom in down here so we can really see what's going on down here. All right, so here's our billing info as best as I can show it. Um, we've got your film studio. So this one just has a generic made up ABC Films presents in association with 123 Industries, um, a John Smith production. So this is the director or the producer. Um, and then I've got my, my studios that are associated with it. So for example, um, like uh, Pixar uh, movies and in association with Disney would be uh, one that would be common. That's something that you would see or Universal Pictures, um, and then there, you know, you would have all that that information in there. And then I have my stars, you know, who is starring in your movie, maybe it's you, maybe it is a actual famous person playing you. So I've got these in here, that's kind of goofy, but um, I've got my, my main stars, you don't have to list everybody that's in the movie. And then the final billing, this information down here, there's a ton of stuff that you would have to come up with for this bottom part. So I am gonna provide you with a file that will give you that whole layer. So that's what's hanging out right here, my billing text layer. You can see that is all just actually an image that I um, snagged off of um, the bottom of the Jurassic Park poster. And um, so this is all information that is relevant to Jurassic Park. And um, yeah, just right inside of this little box right here. And this is just so that when we are looking at this movie poster, we've got that space allowed for, transform it a little bit more. I think it looks better when it's stretched across that space. So that also gives you a break. So you don't have to come up with all of this information on your own, because it is a lot. Certainly if you want to, if you want to come up with all these different roles, 
um, for your movie poster, you surely can. But I will provide that. That'll be in our Schoology file. And you can access that. All right. So that's, that's a, a part that is required. You do have to allow for space for this, but you do not have to create it from scratch. I'll give you a file just to copy paste in there. Um, but it is required. So just a heads up on that. Uh, make sure that you have a complete billing section and I'll give you a checklist in Schoology as well for those. So that's it. Um, when you're done with it, make sure that you are saving it. So like if I wasn't quite finished and I want to save it so that I can continue working. When you hit save as, this is what's going to pop up. You'll see the name of your file and it's going to default to a JPEG. We do not want to save it as a JPEG unless it's completely finished and you're not going to need to go back in there and manipulate it again. What we need to save it as in order to preserve all of those layers is a PXD. So as you are saving this from day to day, make sure that you're selecting that PXD and then hitting download. And because I did make some changes on mine today, I'm going to make sure that I download this. It is going to go into my download folder. So give it a moment to process. Um, once it is finished with that. Yep. So now here it goes. It's downloading for me. It's telling me it's going to be ready in five seconds. So I'm chilling out. I'm not going to get too crazy or click off of anything yet. Don't, you don't have to click this. This is an ad. This is just, they want to show you some advertising since this is a free program. You know how it is. They like to throw ads at you. Once it downloads and you'll see that happen in your download bar, then you can go ahead and click close. And now this is hanging out for me. If I should go to my folder, then I can see that right there, my life is a movie. This is the third time I have um, saved it, but it's hanging out right there. So I know that it's saved and it's good to go. I can come back to it tomorrow or the next day and add to it if I want to. All right. So that's it. Um, again, there'll be a list, a checklist of things, but this is meant to give you a first-hand look at how to use Pixlr to create that movie poster. If you have any questions, please do um, give me a holler and I will definitely try to help you as much as I can. Until later days, take her easy. See you later, guys.